Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to be comparing the Fuji XF 18 to 55 mm f2.8 to f4 with the XF 16 to 55 f2.8. We're going to be comparing these two lenses on the 40 megapixel sensor on the Fuji XH2. I've got some interesting results to share from side by side tests to a real world landscape photography example. I'm going to also be printing a couple of images to see how the two lenses compare on paper when printed. So be sure to stick around until the end as there's lots to cover in today's episode. So there's lots of videos on YouTube comparing these two lenses already but I feel the goalposts have been moved somewhat now with the introduction of the 40 megapixel sensor. I think it's fair to say that some lenses perform worse or should I say uh, you know show their flaws more on the larger sensor which I guess is to be expected but perhaps it makes choosing the right lens for your setup more difficult. So hopefully this video will help help you out if you're considering one of these lenses. I should say as well that the 16 to 55 lens is on Fuji's recommended list of lenses for the 40 megapixel system, whereas the 18 to 55 is not. The 18 to 55 did have a firmware update in October 2022, I think it was, which improved overall resolution. Now I did do a before and after comparison before the update and I did notice a bit of a difference. So if you already own or are buying the 18 to 55, just check which firmware you're on and see if you need an update or not. I should also mention that I'm doing these tests from a landscape photographer's perspective. So I'm concentrating on colors, contrast, resolution, and edge to edge sharpness as well. So before we get into the image quality comparison, let's just run through the physical differences between these two lenses. The 18 to 55 specs is as follows. The lens has a full frame focal length equivalent of 27 to 83 millimeters. It has an f2.8 to f4 variable aperture. There are no aperture markings on the aperture ring and it weighs 310 grams. It has a 58 millimeter filter size and has lens optical image stabilization with an OIS switch. It has a minimum focus distance of 0.3 meters and has linear autofocus motors which will work well for photo and video. This lens is not weather sealed though and the price in the UK is roughly £679. Here's the 16 to 55 specs. It has a full frame focal length equivalent of 24 to 83 millimeters, has a constant f2.8 aperture, has aperture markings at every stop. It weighs 655 grams, has a 77 millimeter filter size, has no optical image stabilization, has a minimum focus distance of 0.6 meters, has linear autofocus motors which work well for photo and video. This lens is weather sealed and the price in the UK comes in at around £979. As you can see from those specs, the 18-55 to really does pack a punch, especially when you look at the specs on paper. So it's, really, it's a really interesting lens, but let's get into the image comparison to see how they stack up against each other. So let's head on down to the coast, grab a couple of images that we can print, then we'll come back here make a couple of prints and take a look at some side-by-side -side comparisons in a bit more of a controlled environment on the computer. It's absolutely beautiful today. Sunny, absolutely great, considering it's beginning of February. <laughs> I'm gonna take some shots of these houses behind me. You can see the beautiful colors reflecting in these rock pools. I think it'll make for the perfect print to compare these two lenses, because we've got a lot of contrast, detail, and color, which is obviously very, very important. So it should make a nice print. I don't think it's gonna be a fantastic landscape photography image, but it'd be great for this purpose. So before we take the photograph, I just want to show you this amazing little area just down here that only gets uncovered by the tides now and again. And it is an ancient woodland. It's 5,000 years old, which is pretty incredible. And it's predominantly oak, I believe. My wife and I found some acorns down here once, which is pretty cool. 5,000 year old acorns, absolutely amazing. But I'll show you some of these uh, stumps and stuff, which is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it's just like a big network of root systems, which have managed to stand the test of time, which is pretty incredible, isn't it? 
just goes to show you, you never know what's underneath the sand. Anyway, let's wander off and grab this photo. So please ignore the building work that's going on in the houses there, we'll just uh, gloss over that bit. <laughs> but you know, maintenance has to be done. So I'm taking an image here, I'm at f7.1, 250th of a second, everything's locked down on the tripod. I'm at about 40 mil ish on the 16 to 55 and I'm focusing on the rocks just past these reflections in the rock pools and that's going to be everything sharp from pretty much my foreground right through to the buildings in the background which is great. F7.1 seems to be the sweet spot for this scene. So in the past I've had a few people comment when I've been doing these comparisons and they've said to me, you know, diffraction starts a little bit earlier in the aperture range with the higher megapixel sensors than they do with the lower megapixel sensors. And that may be the case, I haven't really noticed that myself. However, when you're a landscape photographer, quite often you're looking for a large depth of field. So selecting an aperture that will give you that is very very important so if you're going to shoot at f4 or f2.8 or something like that it's likely that everything in the corners is going to be soft anyway apart from your isolated subject which can look fantastic however for most scenes landscape wise you're looking for quite a large depth of field so generally probably in between f7.1 and f11 is going to be where well where i typically shoot anyway so for me personally it's those apertures that I really want to concentrate on because they're the ones I use the most so if that makes sense. So I'm going to swap up the lenses now, get the 18 to 55 on, take exactly the same shot with exactly the same settings. The lighting is really constant, there's no wind, there's nothing moving in my scene so all should be pretty good I think. So let's get these lenses swapped over and uh, yeah we'll go back to the studio and make this print. Overall, both lenses performed at their best for edge-to-edge -edge sharpness between f5.6 and f8. And in my eyes, for landscape photography, f11 is good enough and usable on both lenses. At a push though, the 16-55 could be used at f16, but probably not on the 18-55. to f22 is definitely not usable on either lens. And this is to be expected as diffraction makes the image soft when we stop down the aperture really small. Here's how the lens is compared for detail and image quality at different focal lengths. I've compared them at one of their better aperture numbers of f8, which is typically where I would shoot most of my landscape photos as I aim to get a large enough depth of field, you know. First, we are at 18 millimeters with the 18 to 55 on the left and the 16 to 55 on the right. Here in the center, the 16 to 55 is just ever so slightly sharper. At the top left and the bottom right, we see the corners are slightly better too on the 16 to 55. So the 16 to 55 just edges it at 18 millimeters. Let's take a look at the 35 millimeter range. The 18 to 55 on the left, the 16 to 55 on the right. The 16 to 55 noticeably resolves more detail in the corners and is just slightly better in the center. I would say they are both really good here, but the 16 to 55 is more like prime lens quality. At 55 millimeters, things got a little bit weird to be honest. Both lenses are virtually identical in the center. This time though, the 18 to 55 is notably better in the top left, and the 16 to 55 is noticeably better in the bottom right, which is odd. At first I thought this was an error, maybe I didn't acquire focus properly, so I redid this several times and each time it came back with the same results. So yeah, they're softer in opposite sides of the frame. Totally usable though, but both lenses looking very similar at, F50, at 55mm, but not perfect. So let's take a look at these prints. So I made a small edit on these photos, just a little bit of contrast and saturation boost and added my standard print sharpening using Unsharp Mask in Photoshop. So nothing too drastic at all. I applied exactly the same settings to both images to keep things consistent. I think both prints look excellent printed on this Platinum Etching 285 fine art paper. It really is difficult to tell them apart. At one foot from the paper, I can see the 18 to 55 is slightly sharper in the center, but is softer at the edges. So I think the 16 to 55 offers more consistency throughout the frame and looks great throughout. Like I mentioned, you can only notice these differences if you're closer than one foot from the paper at A3 size, so really close. If you're printing much larger, then these differences may become more noticeable. But then, at a reasonable viewing distance, I'm not sure you'd be able to notice the difference at all. 
I asked my wife if she could see the difference between the two prints. And she said the only difference that she could see was that the pink house in the middle was slightly more saturated. This is something I hadn't noticed, but now I know I can see it. I think the 18 to 55 has more contrast in the center, which in turn is making the colors more saturated in the center. That's just an observation though. There's no science behind that finding, but it's interesting nonetheless. From my findings, I would say that the image quality is really nice in both lenses. The 16 to 55 is more consistent though. Only at 55 millimeters did I notice that consistency fall away with the top left hand side of the image becoming softer than usual. I think the difference between the two lenses is more apparent the closer you get to the corners. The difference in quality is very, very minimal though. What you do get with the 16 to 55 is that wider field of view at the wide end, which is really helpful. The rugged build quality and weather sealing are great too, especially for landscape photographers. I don't think the lack of optical image stabilization in the 16 to 55 matters now as all of the 40 megapixel sensors have great IBIS capabilities built into the camera body. The downside though is going to be the weight, you know, it's twice as heavy and 300 pounds more expensive. But I'm gonna keep both lenses. The 16 to 55 will be my workhorse go-to landscape photography lens, and the 18 to 55 will be my very competent solution for when I'm long hiking, camping, or scouting new locations, when weight is more important. I think it's great to know that the 18 to 55 can keep up with the 16 to 55 optically. It really is not that far behind in terms of resolution. It just lacks that little bit of consistency throughout the whole of the focal range that the 16 to 55 has. If you're interested in the most important items of landscape photography equipment that I use all of the time, please be sure to check out the video that's over here. But until next week, Take care and I will see you guys soon.